Dear friends, a while ago I had a chat about uh, programmable logic control, building management control, HMI, how the system are integrated, the mistake on integration, uh, control philosophy. Also I talked a little bit about uh, heat exchangers, uh, explaining about relative humidity. I talk about uh, boilers, how they run and uh, how each function of the boiler can be incorrectly displayed onto the HMI. And today I would like to explain to you why all these things are happening. Before we design a program or we run, uh, we write um, like um, system uh, control philosophy, we have to understand how the system works in the first place. When we try to repair a system also, we have to understand how the system works. This way we can understand why the part we replace is broken. It might be an indirect fault or the part failure might be an effect of uh, some other parts that fail. So it is very important for us to understand clearly how the system run. Otherwise, uh, we can become a very expensive uh, technician and uh, we can lose uh, jobs. I would like to talk now about uh, domestic boilers and uh, a little bit about commercial boilers. What you will see with green, uh, that little green rectangle, it is a printed circuit board and on this uh, printed circuit board we have uh, connected uh, these uh, parts of a boiler that uh, helps the boiler to run. We have the heating agent pumps, the flue fan, the ignition and the spark plug, the gas valve, the thermostat, the timer and the high limit switch of the temperature and the high pressure or low pressure switch of the water. You can stop a little bit this video and uh, you can look to this picture because it might be useful for you later on. I'm not going to display all the time the names of each part, otherwise um, these pictures will become a mess. So I want uh, you, if possible, to remember this, uh, the names of uh, these uh, features I put onto this uh, printed circuit board. Now you know the boiler to start it should respect the protocol. First it will check if the water in the system is ok. Then if the high temperature limit start it is ok. Then the thermostat and the timer will call the system to run. The pump will start first and if the pump is healthy and runs then the flue fan will start to purge the system and then it will start the ignition. The spark plug will be initiated and then the gas valve will be open, then the ionization probe will read the information. So here's the pump, this is more for commercial. In a domestic application you will only have a flow switch which tells you that water circulates. But not all the boilers have this flow switch, only probably the modern one now. So if you look to this, please stop the video and have a little look. Cause every single uh, label will help you to understand what I am talking about. Some commercial boilers have differential pressure switch and flow switch and believe me, some do not have. And I will explain to you why. This is a contactor and the contactor I use to run the pumps into commercial installation. This is the way the contactor look like. You have a control and power circuit. As you will see on this picture, you have a programmable logic controller, a building management control. It can even be a printed circuit board. The signal, it is returned through the contactor. So the, PLC, the BMS will send the signal through this isolating switch. It passes by through the contactor and is returning. So this is a very bad installation and I'll explain to you why. If you trace this signal, this yellow-orange, you will see that the, the BMS, the PLC or the printed circuit board send the signal through the isolating switch to the contactor and it's come back. So technically it doesn't tell you if the pump runs. It only tell you the pump it's enabled. And look now quickly to the left hand side. 
you lost the circuit breaker. Now you don't have the power circuit. The PLC still receives its signal. And as far as the PLC is concerned, the pump runs. Can't you see the flow switch is not even integrated into the system? And that's very bad. If you look to the HMI, the HMI will tell you the pump runs. And if you're 100 miles away monitoring the system, then it's very bad. So see, the signal is returned back regardless of the pump status. The HMI always tell you on its screen things run because of these inputs. It receives the input, it tells you, okay, the stuff is running. So it's very important where that input goes back into the PLC. A wrong integration can lead to a disaster. Now let's talk about domestic boiler printed circuit board. The domestic boiler printed circuit board can get data from uh, the pump uh, via a differential pressure switch or a flow switch. You can feed this to if you want and they quite useful sometime. When you enable your boiler, the printed circuit board will send an input into the differential pressure switch and the flow switch, but that input will not be returned. The printed circuit board will not recall that as fault because the printed circuit board is not calling for the pump to run. So it doesn't need the signal back. It is happy only to send the signal. Things will change when the pump will be activated. If you we'll activate the pump, then that signal will go back because when the heating agent will start moving to the installation, the pump will create a differential pressure switch before and after on return and on the flow. Also, because the heating agent moved through the system, that little paddle onto the flow switch, which you'll see it on the right hand side just after the manometer, will close the circuit. That tells you the pumps run. This is a good integration. Now let's see a little bit closer how these pumps run. You have a differential pressure switch and the flow switch. Sometimes both, sometimes none. So when the pump's running, this uh, pump will create a differential pressure before and after the pump. And because the agent move, the agent, the motion of the agent will pull that little paddle onto the flow switch and it will close the other circuit. This is the only way the PLC will know that the agent is moving to the installation. But there can be some bad situation. The flow pipe will be restricted by dirt, by a lot of debris inside. In that case, the pump will still create a difference. See, the differential pressure switch is still sending a good message to the programmable logic controller to this printed circuit board. But the flow switch said no. The agent is not moving through the installation. You'll observe that the boilers overheat very fast. You have a short cycle. The radiator will not be as hot as you want because the agent is restricted. So it is a very good idea to maintain the installation, to wash the installation from time to time because all these debris can damage parts inside the system. So look again, the flow switch set is not enough flow, but the differential pressure switch is satisfied. Now, if you have this blockage before the heating agent um, pump, circulation pump, then you'll have a cavitation phenomena where the pressure onto the return will become very, very low. And then uh, the pump start to extract air from the water and all these bubbles will go into the high side it will be collected by these air eliminators but the air eliminators cannot collect all the air and some of the air can go inside your radiators and then you'll call a technician to your home which will uh, take the air out of your radiators and then you'll be happy only for one or two weeks when they will collect again the air. And then you'll say, well, you fixed my heaters last week and now I have the same problem. You have to clean your installation from time to time. Make sure you do not have this debris inside. Now let's talk about the flow. Assuming that the heating agent pump runs well, 
The printed circuit board will go to the next level. We'll send the input to the differential pressure switch of the flue fan. As long as the flue fan is not initiated, the signal will come back to the normal closed switch. Guys, not all these differential pressure switch or proven switches have that normal close. Some of them have only normal open, which will be activated when the fan runs. But let's say this one got both. So as long as the flue fan is not initiated, the uh, differential pressure switch will send the signal back through the normal close switch to the printed circuit board and it will say I'm healthy, the fan it is not initiated is great. So this is not an alarm. When you start the fan instead, can't you see the two blue little tubes that goes from the fan into the differential pressure switch will uh, create a pressure into the differential pressure switch and will activate the switch which will close the normal open switch sending a signal to the printed circuit board telling to the printed circuit board that okay you enable the fan, the fan running, the fan achieve the right uh, air pressure and uh, the switch will send back the signal you're waiting for. So it is very important to integrate the boiler this way and this is probably the only way and the legal way and the safe way to do it. Don't use any other method. Let's see this switch closer. So these two blue tubes push air inside the differential pressure switch and only then the switch will be activated. If the fan is not running, the switch will be in this position, in a normal closed. So the printed circuit board will send the signal into this differential pressure switch, which will be returned to the normal closed switch. The fan is not running. These little blue tubes does nothing. There's no any air difference in a uh, pressure difference into this uh, flu fan. So the printed circuit board know that the flu fan is on standby and uh, it will not trigger an alarm because it, this is a normal thing. When the fan is activated, you will create a pressure inside that will activate the differential pressure switch which will close the normal on switch and you will send a signal back and it will tell okay the run mode is activated and the signal back tells you that so they agree and then the printed circuit board will be happy not to trigger an alarm and to jump to the next phase to initiate the um, ignition so it's very important for me that you will understand how important it is the proven switch never bypass it one of my colleagues did it you want to play hero was not even a gas engineer now this is the initiation of the flame. You have the spark plug and the flame detector. Can be UV, can be ionization probe, halfway rectified. There are many, many type of uh, devices that recognize the flame. Either work on temperature, on light, on half rectified wave, like electrons, etc. Let's keep it simple. The one in the right hand side on the top, it is the spark plug. So the printed circuit board uh, once it's happy that the heating agent pumps run and the flue fan purge and it runs well because this um, proven switch send the right signal back will jump to the next phase will prepare itself to start the spark plug and then to turn on the gas valve and uh, then to put uh, this uh, flame detector on alert to monitor the flame. So if it's all good, as you'll see, the printed circuit board will start the spark plug. And the spark plug will have this uh, high voltage. Uh, it can be uh, like uh, a different type of uh, system, like a hot uh, plug system kind of um, the spark plug run on a very high electricity but then uh, you have another type of uh, um, heating uh, an element so you will start uh, the flame now 
if this spark plug fail uh, three or four times, you have to check the the gas valve or the connection between the gas valve and the printed circuit board or even the isolating valve because maybe um, they faulty because you do not have a, you don't have a gas onto the burner. If this flame, uh, if the initiation uh, flame initiation will start again and the gas valve will open and then it will fail again, then you have to check the ionization probe, I mean the flame detector, maybe there's a fault there. If the system will initiate again the flame and uh, the ionization probe will start sending back the signal to the printed circuit board, then uh, the printed circuit board will hold the gas valve uh, open and then you'll have a normal flame and your boiler will uh, run well. But you have to be very careful as you'll see in this picture. Once the PC board control will receive the right information from the uh, flame monitoring de device, UV or uh, halfway rectify wave or any other type of flame detector, you will turn off the spark plug. See, the spark plug is not ready anymore. Now, again, if you want to learn more about uh, boilers, boiler integration, the mistakes of the integrations, how they will be displayed onto this HMI, I have more videos. I don't try to make them very complicated. I can do videos about uh, Siemens programming, Alan Bradley programming, but that belongs to the software engineer. As gas engineer or HVAC engineer, we have to think more about uh, this uh, control philosophy. So what is important here, as you'll see, on the printed circuit board, you have to receive the signals back either way from the water pump or from the flu fan. Once you have the signal back, always the boilers will uh, jump on the next phase and uh, that will make uh, the boiler run well. If you look now, you have this uh, flame ignition protocol. First, the spark plug come on, you'll have that zap. Then the gas valve come on and then if you'll have the flame and it's all good, uh, this uh, uh, ionization probe will send the signal back into the printed circuit board and the spark plug will be turned off. So now I'll put back the boiler so you can see how the boiler it is. Let's take out the lid of the boiler so you'll see what we have inside. Now we can stop the video now, you can read all the details inside the boiler. Also the actuators which allows the heating agent to go via different uh, heat exchangers, radiators, uh, hot water heaters. You can have many valves, they uh, can be three-way valves or single-way valves, etc. It becomes more and more complicated, but uh, I have some more videos. Please watch them and then you will find more about boilers. So now if you watch the again the heating protocol. So I took the leads everywhere so you can see live what happened. You have the switch on the top. You turn on the switch, then uh, the time programmer will uh, hold the system off. Now it is on and the heating process will be initiated. First look to the pump. The pump starts spinning and very soon on the right hand side the flow switch will close the circuit. So uh, once the circuit is closed the flow fan is initiated and that will send the signal to this uh, printed circuit board. will tell him okay I'm healthy and if the flu fan is healthy then the spark plug comes and then the gas valve will be open and then we have the flame and the boiler run. So see the heating agent pump should run all the time and the flu fan should run all the time. If any of those two will stop the heat uh, the boiler should stop instantly. Otherwise accidents can happen and slowly your installation will heat up but uh, if you see when I put that um, 
actuators, the actuator might hold off the radiators, so now the actuators open and now uh, you heated the system. This is it about the boilers. You can learn more if you want to go into details. There's a lot of books. Every boiler come with a book. It was just a basic explanation so you understand a little bit about the boilers. What can I say guys? Thank you very much for watching my uh, video and uh, please criticize me as much as you want. Uh, come with new ideas. I do these videos for free and I'm not teaching you how to do your job. I just share my struggle with my uh, fellow colleagues which work in the industry and uh, what can I say? Um, I wish you don't have too, too much trouble but I know you do because we work hard we found all the old boilers and uh, inimaginable incorrect design jobs by designers what can I say thank you very much and uh, watch my other videos if you want subscribe if you not don't but uh, have a wonderful time and uh, very easy jobs thank you